Well, the Cam Jansons first uh, were published in 1980, and probably most people listening to your in the interview now aren't aware of what was going on in 1980 in children's literature. Uh, actually, before 1980, because I wrote the first book in 1977. And what made the book different is that um, at the time there were I Can Reads, if you think of Frog and Toad, and 8 to 12 books, if you think of Ramona by Beverly Cleary. Uh, but there was very little in between. So that a child who finishes with the I Can Reads was expected to make the leap to the, um, the 8 to 12s. And for some children, it was no problem at all, but for others, it was a problem. And uh, we invariably lost many readers along the way. And what the Cam Jansons and the books that followed, which are now commonly called first chapter books, what those do is they're in an intermediate step. So there's, um, if you read the Cam Jansen, not familiar with the genre, you'll, believe, you'll feel that it moves very quickly. A lot of action and um, very little description and characterization, word-wise. Actions will describe, but, but the words themselves don't. And um, editors at the time didn't understand what was going on, but what was going on was children that age read slowly. You can't rush the child. He won't read any faster, and children generally do not skip when they read. So what I did was I made the story move faster for the child who reads slowly. And um, beginning in 1980, books were, it was discovered that there was a real need for these books. And that's why the Cam Jansons, in my opinion, uh, became successful because there was a real need for readers for books that move quickly and don't lose the child's uh, interest. Um, and even for a child who could make the leap, why should a child have to work so hard? He'll get to Ramona six months later. There's no hurry. So that's that's the concept behind, behind the Cam Jansons. And the other thing that seems to work is that um, when children begin to read, they puzzle out word after word after word, but don't necessarily pay attention to what they're reading. Uh, but with a mystery, children tend to pay attention because they want to catch the clues. So besides the writing style, the fact that these books are mysteries really helps because children pay attention and I've been told they often reread the book so that they can catch things they may have missed the first time through. So that's the Cam Jansen story. I was a math teacher. I taught in a very tough New York City inner school. Um, and when my first son was born, I took a childcare leave. My wife didn't want to leave her job, so I took a childcare leave to take care of my infant son. And, um, but I still was committed to writing, and I had a, a deal with myself that I would spend five hours every day just writing. Um, but when Michael, my son, woke up from his nap, I would take him for a walk. And I would take him to the park. That was a daily, um, a daily uh, habit. Uh, if you read the first Cam Jansen mystery, it's Cam Jansen, the mystery of the stolen diamonds. Uh, Cam and Eric are watching Eric's baby brother, Howie, while their parents are shopping in a shopping mall. An alarm goes off, a jewelry store has been robbed, a man runs, and then and the other customers come out, a couple with a baby and two elderly women. People chase the man who ran. They catch him, he doesn't have the diamonds. And they don't know what happened to the diamonds, where they go, who stole them. Cam realizes that the uh, couple with the baby only have a baby with them. Well, she knows from taking care of Howie now, Eric's baby brother, that you can't take a baby out without a whole bag of all sorts of things. Baby wipes, bottle, pacifier, extra diapers, a whole bag full of stuff, an insulated bag. And she realized something was suspicious about that couple. She and Eric, with Howie in the baby carriage, followed the couple and discovered that the couple, the man who ran, were in cahoots. And uh, the, the mystery is eventually solved and the, and the criminals are caught. But how did I know you couldn't take a baby out and just take the baby out? I mean, that became the whole the key to the mystery. I knew that because I did it every day. 
So the, um, the first mystery came from what I was doing at the time, which was childcare. Do you have any advice for parents as far as getting their child to write or read better or more often or even just getting started? Do you have any, any tools or advice for that? Well, the first, as far as reading is concerned, um, you know, I, I often visit schools and I tell them what happened when I was a young child, sent to the library to pick out a book for myself, and I looked at thousands of books on the shelves, and it was upsetting. I mean, I couldn't read them all. And a librarian told me, we have all these books not because someone expects you to read them all, but because everyone likes something different. Find what you like. And I think the worst not the worst, but a, a poor idea for a parent is to choose reading for his or her child. Take them to the library, let him or her choose what the child wants. Uh, let write, reading become an individual choice. Uh, and the same thing with writing. You know, let them approach what we should be doing as parents and teachers is not um, telling them what to write, but helping them make their writing more uh, um, more successful um, and probably the what I would think would be a wonderful thing to do with a child is have a child keep a diary or journal and um, let the child know it's his or her private journal and it's not being graded and then just write what you feel like and once they learn to put words on paper without worrying how well they're put together or even the spelling that's the first step once they have that, they can go to the second step, which is making it more accessible and more successful as a story or as a, an entry or whatever. Um, but the hard, different, I find one of my sons a difficulty putting words on paper. Boy, is brilliant, but he knew when he was writing it down that it wasn't perfect. And he didn't understand it. You write it in imperfectly, and then you rewrite it. And if we could teach them to write imperfectly, just to write because you want to write it, that's the first step. Mm -hmm.